Beautiful. Yes, Michael Seeger is higherconsciousness.ca. Um, that's where you can get the four pillars of the teachings of the Ascended Masters, if you're interested in that one. And um, you'll hear me reading the first two books that I've posted, and I just need to edit the third and then actually record the fourth, and then uh, that'll be gone too. Um, does anyone have any, uh, any suggestion that you wanted to put forward privately? Because this okay, perfect. is going to be a top level experience this evening. Gentlemen, it is great to have you here with Denise Exler and I, who actually helped in inspiring the music for Elbow 22, a project that we worked on last year now. We are in 2022. Yeah. And that song is called You Are Loved. And tonight, it is about the kingdom within and really remembering that we are here to be co-creators of a life worth living. And so I believe that we really need to be having a conscious conversation about the truth. And that includes both who and whose we are. And so individually and personally, we are needing to have a transformation of our self-image. And that is where the bigger picture fits in to things. And so I'm so excited to see who joins in this evening with us live and who tune in later on as well. And I wanna say that this is an open forum, so it's not just about coming and hearing me or any one speaker speak, but at the same time, I believe that if we can have some conscious conversation, then we can have a high level, level conversation about what we are, what creator is, and how we are conscious co-creators of the experience that we are having that has been hijacked and that we are now taking back the narrative around so that's why I called this meeting this evening and I'm grateful that each of you have shown up and that more continue to. Denise, if you'd be open to me throwing it your way to start out. And <laughs> sure. Um, so what would you like me to comment on exactly? Yeah, so I'm just gonna set the ground rules in that we've got the chat group for us to be able to interact with and have conscious conversation in the sidelines while anyone is actually speaking as well. So we have the opportunity to speak into both. And then I think the biggest question is, what is the point? What is the purpose of life? Why are we here? And why does it matter for us to gather in common unity in community with others that believe that it matters and that want to be in common unity with others who believe that it matters. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. So what I think it's important to be with like-minded communities because um, together we are stronger, like our light combines. Uh, we raise each other up, our vibrations are higher. Um, right now, so th there's a, um, a thing about people are saying there is a war going on, light versus dark, there's a dark agenda. And the truth is, is nothing can overcome the light. Nothing, nothing overcomes it. But there's a major psyops going on to make us believe that that is happening. Major psyops. So the war is within us. The war is within us um, because we need to remember who we are. We are sovereign light beings. We are very strong. We are of the light. And you know, you know that song that goes, um, "This little light of mine." That makes me really mad. <laughs> It does, because I go, we're kick-ass strobe lights. That's Woo! what we are. We're not little lights, and I'm just going to shine. No, we're very bright. We're very bright. We have very powerful energy. And as soon as we came onto the earth, we were born onto the earth. We were sold this bill of goods that we are nothing. Mm -hmm. We need to be told what to do. And no, that's just not, that's just not true. So I believe that the major war is going on with us. 
and there's a psyops going on um, to tell us that, you know, and a lot of fear propaganda so that we dim our lights, we dim our power. And once everybody realizes that that's just all an illusion and we are very strong, we are very powerful, this is all going to end. It's going to end anyway. Like, I, you know, the light is one, but um, it's going to, you know, we determine the timeline. We determine it. Um, we are the co-creators of it. We are creating it. And there's um, a lot of fear porn happening to make this line stretch out. Um, you know, so that, that's my, my thought on it anyways. That's so. phenomenal. Denise, thank you for sharing. And Jim Kerr with the bubble bus is in the house, which is so awesome to see you, Jim. How is it going? It's going really well. Gosh, the last time I saw you, we were in a big field out in the middle of nowhere up in Blackstock. Right? Yeah, I literally had my tent right next to the bubble bus. I was like, I have no idea where I am right now other than in the middle of country that I've driven to from a workshop in another northern place that I just matched. So I was completely off kilter. And I showed up and my girlfriend had her vehicle parked that she was going to sleep in. And then it was just like, can I sleep next to you, please? And it happened that she was next to the bubble bus. So I literally got placed next to the bubble bus, not by choice, but by divine appointment. And so I invited Jim and, well, actually his partner, Thundra, to be able to come in and she's under the weather. So sending her love and everyone that is experiencing a vibrational shift or upgrade right now to receive some healing and Denise I'm sure at some point may be willing to maybe guide us through a process maybe um, just throwing this out here and giving her time to respond and us to see where the meeting goes we've got yeah. Michael Seegers has just jumped in too so hey hey Michael great to see you Hi, Laura amazing and we've got moz as well which is super exciting so um i don't know everybody yet real and i see iphone names so anonymous but fully present and grateful to have you here um i i want to just mention jim um i'd like to toss over the ball to you because i feel like it's really great uh parameters to set the meeting around in terms of your bubble theory and about not popping people's bubbles i think it's phenomenal <laughs> um yeah okay cool sure um uh, you know the world is weird uh <laughs> and and we're all trying to make sense of it and it it's it's not always easy um but in my life i just i i, I kind of got to the point where i i i wanted to change the world but i didn't know what to do and uh, so what I ended up doing was uh, we, we had this bus and it started off as a Burning Man art car. Uh, and then we kind of rolled in a philosophy with it, which is uh, the Church of Bubbles philosophy, which is really quite simple, that we all live in our own beautiful bubbles of reality. We don't have to be pricks and go popping other people's bubbles. <clears throat> it's better to co-join with the bubbles that lift us up higher and make us feel more beautiful about ourselves. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, and the reason why we came in tonight, uh, I, I love the title of this. Um, you know, I, I love all these uh, people who are banging their head against the wall and they're like, oh my God, I need that person to change. And, and we want that leader to go and we want this one to come in. And, and in reality, all we really have to do is look in the mirror and realize that we're the heroes we've always been looking for. So I really resonated with your philosophy there and uh, it goes right in line with the Church of Bubbles. So yeah, baby. Thank you for showing up. Um, as I mentioned, I would love for this to be an open forum. And so anyone that has a contribution that you'd like to make, please just gesture because I do read the screens and I wanna make sure that we all feel like we're equal and on common land because that's what common law is. And so I've had quite a journey this past year that I'm gonna be actually unpacking uh, very soon. Um, but I wanted to throw the ball over to Michael Seegers and just say, uh, Michael and I actually created the Michael and Laura show and we've got about 20 episodes. Michael has been a student and, and teacher of the teachings of the Ascended Masters for 
30 years. And so we, I've learned a tremendous amount from Michael and um, I have also encountered my own questioning around um, certain mystery schools and traditions. And so I've kind of pulled back and done my own thing, but it doesn't take away from the validity of Michael or what he's doing and what he believes in because he, has had the time to marinate in everything that he knows. And so I wanted to invite Michael to be able to come in and maybe offer an alternative perspective uh, that you can stand up for. Because I wanted, I had an idea last year actually, and Michael was a huge proponent for it, where I wanted to have a master's show off, not to show off specifically and like, you know, compare belief systems, but I think it's a phenomenal idea to be able to have a space where we can have some charged conversations and really up level ourselves and sharpen conversation. And basically truth cannot conflict. So if we're able to really come together in a common space and talk about the inward journey with people that have got there in different ways, I think that it just opens the toolbox of what's possible because then we start saying, well, each of them that are in the screen got there in their own way, which means that it's possible for me too once I fully commit to going, to choosing, to actually create the life worth living which is ultimately part of what the whole journey is about. And so Michael has Shambhala Temple of Light, where one of the questions on the home page, Michael, if you want to speak into that and how it ties into tonight's conversation. The question on the home page, um, assuming you're talking about underneath the big picture where it says the time comes in the life of every individual to ask, who am I? And why am I here? Is that the question you're talking about? Yeah. Well, the masters gave us the following answer. And the answer is you are on the spiritual path and the purpose of your soul's evolution on earth is to grow in self-mastery, balance your karma and fulfill your mission on earth so that you can return to the spiritual dimensions that are your real home. Mm. Now, when I looked at your invitation it's uh, the title of this is the kingdom of god is within you well it absolutely is because you are god you cannot separate the drop from the ocean we're all part of it mm -hmm. yeah we're still ocean water in the glass yeah and you can't fit the whole ocean in the glass but Yet all of it is there, all of the essence is there, all of the qualities and attributes are there. Yes, soul essence is such a key and fundamental piece to all of what it is about to go inward. So thank you, Michael, for showing up tonight and being willing to contribute and share the space in your belief systems with everyone else that is willing to come in tonight and do the same. Maz, I'm not sure whether you might want to share something at this point or if somebody else would like to contribute why you showed up and what's important to you this evening. I would love to make sure that that is part of what we look at with the journey inward. Otherwise, I would at this time just simply like to make mention of the poem that I referenced in the chat box, which is Our Deepest Fear by Marianne Williamson. If you're familiar with it, I feel like it's a great place to start. Because what she says is, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. And we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, talented, gorgeous, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. You were made to make manifest the glory of God that is within you. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, our presence automatically liberates others. For we are each lighthouses in our part of the world, shining very brightly, very strategically placed 
for the mission, for the assignment that each of us are here to complete. So if our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure, what does the inner kingdom mean to you? Is the question I would love to pose to who would like to step up and have a bat at the question. I can I can go. Um, I totally agree with Michael that um, we are part of God. So the inner like right. Like that's what Yeshua said. He said, you know, the kingdom is within us, right? And we are all part of God. So if we think of as God is a flame, we are the sparks, right? We're, we're the same. We're the same energy. We're, we're all part of the God force. So, um, yeah, so that's what I, I believe is that the struggle is within each of us right now. And the external is a huge distraction to take us away from remembering who we are. So. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. It reminds me of the tale of the two wolves that the old Cherokee grandfather told his grandfather mm -hmm. around the campfire about two dogs or two wolves fighting within. And then one is good and one is evil. And then the grandson horrified says which will win and he says the one you feed grandson yeah what are we feeding and that's part of why if we understand the distraction that's on the outside in order to keep us from actually doing the inner work then we can understand why it's so important that the real estate being fought for the territory is in between our minds in between our ears and our heart because that's mm -hmm. when then the BS actually integrates into the heart field of resonance, which is how we then manifest and magnify that which we desire to us. We actually merge awareness with will, and then we get the creation of that which we desire to create as the co-creators of the experience that we're creating because first we do it here and then experience it there, but far too many of us are letting ants run the show. By Jim Quick's definition, automatic negative thought seeds. What kind of garden are we planting within the mm -hmm. inner kingdom of us? And how are we going to support ourselves to actually plant something that is worthy of a king, that is worthy of a queen to show up to this year? What kind of kingdom are we willing to create is the question. And then we have to remember the law of the garbage truck, if you're familiar with that one, where yeah. everybody's running around, driving through life, filling up with garbage, all these places, all the toxic ideas and beliefs and memories of experiences that weren't fully unpacked so the emotion got stuck in the not now moment that makes us resentful because our power is there instead of with us present and so these garbage trucks run around and drive right drive around all day and then they park eventually and sometimes they try to offload it onto you but sometimes we happen to invite those people into the inner kingdom of us which is our personality or a metaphor for it Debbie Ford talks about it in a phenomenal book called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. If anyone's familiar with this book, uh, book suggestions are a phenomenal way to be a resource to one another. So I offer that one to you. But the inner kingdom basically says that it's like our personality is akin to an, a kingdom. And it's like when we're little, we think the whole thing is beautiful. And then somebody comes into our space and then they cast their judgments, which is like the garbage truck, into our kingdom. And we think that what they said has more merit because they should know better. And so then we take it personally and we close off an aspect of ourselves and another and another and another and another as all the judgments come in. And then we forget that we're this whole beautiful kingdom. And we've got so much garbage piled away in these rooms that we've locked and lost the key to that we don't feel in control of ourselves. Our power is in a not now moment, you know? 
and we have to choose, which is part of what is the inner kingdom of God mean to you? Michael Seegers, are you going to step up to the bat? Well, I'm thinking that we, we all know that you have to have a balance of, of positive inputs to counteract all the negative inputs that are already dominating. Mm -hmm. But when I talk to people about my personal practice, and often people ask me, and they're just dumbfounded mm -hmm. to discover the amount of time I spend on spiritual work, whether it's doing my yoga or doing prayers or chanting mantras or singing songs or whatever it is. But I give it at least two hours a day. And for most people, that's just impossible to wrap their heads around. But if you're going to go out in the world and immerse yourself in the mass consciousness and deal with on a subconscious level, all the energies that are impacting you and then come home and not have something to detoxify that it's going to hurt and that's why i give two hours a day to my spiritual work it's it's just required it's very healthy to do that and when people find a practice that works for them i think they just give it more time than, than most people do you know 10 minutes a day 15 minutes a day is a wonderful thing to get accustomed to but in these challenging times i think people need a lot more than that i love it your spiritual detox absolutely that's so brilliant how can we create a self-care practice that really supports us in detoxing from all of the toxicity of the mainstream that's poisoned and that we're called to now take back like my friend is into the water business, for instance, that's very lucrative. Like how do we really take back the water so that instead of HDO, we have H2O? Have you heard about this? The diet, um, I'll have to send you the video if you're interested. This isn't a sales pitch either, um, but it's just to say that we think that we're drinking H2O, but then now they're saying that it's HDO and so it's just like when our own water source is questioned or like the rna of the like the message that goes to the dna to tell it us what to be to tell ourselves what to be is now changing like when the basics no no longer are just the basics we have a really tipping point moment to consider and I think that that is, it brings me to Carolyn Mace's work again, which has been so influential, so influential in my world. Um, but about the fact that we're living at a time when there has actually never been equal capacity for complete destruction or complete rebirth the way that we have right now in this moment. And I remember last year, Michael and Denise being individuals that I contacted because I was having these fear-based, people need to know, people need to wake up. And I was desperate. And these two offered wise counsel and assistance and helped me get really grounded more so in the moment. So. Shout out to both of you and huge appreciation for really helping me see that the world wasn't going to end. And you know what? I know this is embarrassing, but I'll be honest, like there was a point where I literally didn't want to cut the grass because if they cut the power and it was like that was all we had left to eat, like the scarcity mentality that goes with fear is underwhelming and it's laughable except for when it's at yourself and you're like oh crap like that's not ideal and you don't really want to share it to be honest but at the same time i share it because like i was there to a point and then it was just like the story that i was trying to wake everyone up to 
wasn't actually one that has come true either. And so then I had to start really living my own life and taking my power back into the creative potential that I had in the moment. So I, I tasked myself and worked with Jared Wade on album 22 and Denise Exler and I did a song for that. Michael Seegers mm -hmm. did a video to talk about sound frequency in that and how to actually take our power back from the radio waves that they have weaponized against us by turning the standard to a frequency mm -hmm. that requires us to change our vibration. Every time we listen to a different note, we have to recalibrate. Denise? Oh, um, I guess because I was nodding. I <laughs> No, um, you know, I wouldn't be so hard on yourself because that's part of the awakening process, going down the rabbit hole. I was there. I was there. I was and all my spiritual friend go, did you know this and this and that and this and that? And they're going, what are you talking about? They thought it was completely lunatic. And I'm going, why doesn't anybody else see this? And I was like, wow. And, you know, and um, so it's all a, a personal journey. And um, now where I've arrived at is um, I realize there is so much misinformation externally in every camp, right? The only thing we can trust is our connection to source because that's pure and that's where we get the answers rather than um fall into fear and to listen to this i still get phone calls and things sent to me by people that mean well this is going to happen and this is what this politician is saying and this is what they're planning and this is the reason for that and it's just no i i've i've um really really limited my time on social media and what I listen to and everything because I find that I'm just much happier not listening to it that doesn't mean I'm in denial it's just it's I'm just connected to a higher power right now and that's not putting anyone down that is fighting in the trenches and you know because that's their journey mine is leading people to the light because um I believe when we're in our full frequency, there's nothing more powerful than that. Like you look at the Maharishi effect where people just coming together in meditation, like, um, or the crime rate around them. So, you know, it's very, very powerful and, and everybody has their own skill set. So that's what I'm focusing on is helping people to remember who they are. But I believe it's part of the process to go through this, to look around and see like, my God, I wasn't aware of that. Oh my God, like, oh, you know, and you're seeing all these things start to, to happen around you. And, and um, how can you not be affected? How can you not react to that? So it's a journey then to trust yourself, right? It's our journey to, to finally trust ourselves and our own judgment and our own beliefs and what resonates with us. But it's a process. So I might have been with you there, you know, like, don't cut the grass, <laughs> you know, like we all went through that. I, I bought an extra freezer. I had three big freezers full of meat and whatever, you know, and um, but I stopped. I stopped because I, I just have total faith and trust now Woo! that, you know, and I think this is all winding down. I really do. I feel it. I felt a shift of energy about last August. And, you know, I really feel it's winding down. Like there's a lot of signs, but um, it may not be apparent to everyone, but that, anyways, that's my own personal story. That's what I believe. So, yeah. Thank you, Thank you for sharing that because I do think that we all have our own waking up story. Yes. And sometimes that waking up process is really difficult. And sometimes we make calls that we shouldn't. And when that happens, we need to really know who we can trust to call and mm. who we need to Hi. make space for to ask a question. One second, Lori? Yeah, Zoom call that was okay. Um, we'll just mute you there, Lori, because I think that that's mm -hmm. unintentional that you be unmuted. And Mary, you've got your hand up. Would love to hear from you. Hello. Hi. 
um, I just want to say that I'm re I really appreciate everything that you have on your channel. Um, all your videos, they make me feel so much better. Um, it just, I've been through my journey and uh, all the stuff that you've been through plus more, plus more, <laughs> but anyways, it's, um, and, and just really helped me through a lot of stuff. And I have, you know, always want to share your stuff to other people. So, but anyways, um, so I just, I really get like about life, like everything's a test, like, you know, things come at you and it's like, it tests you to like, okay, how are you going to be in this matter? How are you going to be in that matter? And then there's times when you're going to be like, oh my God, I just screwed up big time. Look, look at me, right? Or whatever, just fun things or whatever. But um, yeah, just all, all kinds of tests all the time, just coming at me about my faith, about my, you know, who am I, you know? And it's just, it's amazing. It's just, I, I'm living on a bus right now. I've chosen to live on a bus. Um, it's a very, very amazing experience because I didn't want to live in an apartment anymore. Uh, I didn't want to be like, um, I didn't want to be living like with all this stuff going on. It would have just got to my mind. So I chose to live on my bus and we're out, out in the country. And um, so what I'm living for right now is to help humanity in whatever way I could. Um, uh, I want to be able, I want to, like, how I see, like, what kind of kingdom I want to create is that all people don't have to work anymore. They don't have to work. It's not just income coming to them and they, could, and they could just live their life and have fun with their families. And I just see this world like that. And, you know, all the rest is just propaganda, you know? So, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, yeah. If and you, I just, I don't know, it's just, I'm just committed to fun and play families and people and everybody happy, you know, and I'm just here to, 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 you know, um, share and, and keep, keep opening up eyes of people around me, like with anything like, and just seeing the light and going into the light and, you know, because there's so much darkness and you know it's just um and especially you know just kids and everything there's just so much darkness but i don't know just i keep finding channels like yours and i you know i i, I watch you know watch your videos and all that and that keeps me in the light you know because there's so much darkness out there and there's so much so many lies you know so i'm there to you know educate people too with some stuff you know because you know, if you don't touch anything that's not broken, like, you know what I mean? Uh, I raised my kids very naturally. I didn't give them any, any injections. And uh, I'm so glad I stayed home with them. And I just, I just feel like I want to help other people with that, you know? Way to go. Like, yeah. I ha all those tools I had, I was a top leader in New York City. I was, I was, uh, you know, I was a coach. I was, I, I got coached for like five, six years. I was like, like I was, you know, it, you know, ruthless, compassionate. So I am who I am for the world is ruthless, compassionate and not, you know, not a lot of people like me, but it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but then, you know, the, I'm just here to bring the light out of, you know, I used to take care of older people. And, and since this COVID, uh, I was told, no, I can't work anymore. I'm supposed to do all this stuff. And I worked in the film industry. I got really, I gave up my $100,000 job to just live on a bus, not make any income right now. And I don't care. I'm really happy. Like, I'm really happy. And maybe this is where I have to be first so I can teach other people and, 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 bring, and help, you know, Maybe, maybe the first people I need to help is, is, you know, the Inuit people. I'm getting messages about that, you know? So I, I'm just really finding myself to, to be that contribution to humanity. Love it. Yeah. Way to go.
Well, if you know how to actually live on a bus and how to kit it out so that it's possible, I'm sure you would have a lot of friends if like schools stop being in, well, I don't know, can they shut down the indoctrination camps or like, how does that even fit into the rebuilding of the society that we want to experience, the world that we want to experience, right? It's just like, Right now we've got young men and women going to camps where they're being taught songs about masking and pretending to be other than you are and ultimately doing anything but actually go within, which is the answer to all of this, which is why I wanted to host this call tonight, not because I claim to have the answer, but because I believe that the people that I have connected with have an understanding that may be able to help offer you an insight or a question that it triggers in you to be able to ask the question you never thought to ask before in order to find an answer that you didn't know to ask for before, but that benefits you greatly once you've actually had the awareness to be able to do it. So that's really the intention and the desire there is the inner kingdom experience that I, I love to share, which I mentioned about Debbie Ford and basically really thinking about how our personality has been closed off and that now we have an opportunity to do some soul fragment recall. So to actually go find the aspects of ourselves that we lost and left in a not now moment and to bring those back so that we can be more whole in the present now that we are. So that is really what I would like to see come from this is more gatherings like this. But I wanted to test the water and see who would show up and what the questions were, what the comments were, what the contributions were. I want to really start the conversation about an unconventional topic, which is the fact that we might actually be the ones we've been waiting for which is why it's not a matter of becoming the one, but it is about coming to the remembrance that we are the ones that are the players on the field at this time in humanity's history with an extra E for energy that we are being called to intentionally deploy in all of the circumstances we find ourselves in at this time. So how are we showing up? What part are we playing? What part of the awakening process are we at? And once we take away all of those answers from how we answered in the way that we're showing up in the world, it's like, how are we doing with that fight on the inside? How are we fight? How are we doing with balancing the fact that the devil lived is just front words, backwards, same letters. How are we doing with our intentional investment of the way that we put our energies together? with others like who are in this space tonight which I would love if anyone else had a perspective that you wanted to share about that journey inward I'm happy to not be the one that is speaking at this moment though I do until someone else feels ready to step forward with us oh. yeah Perfect, Denise, thank you. Ooh, okay. and Riel as well after, okay. Okay, well, I'll just make it quick. Um, I just wanted to say to Mary that you're a beautiful light, you're a real inspiration to people. And if you are happy, you are living your life's purpose. If you're, I remember I, you know, I always said that because one time Archangel Michael appeared to me, um, I was getting an acupuncture at the time. I don't know, oh, there he is. And, and right away, I'm like, what's my life purpose? What's my life purpose? You know, tell me, tell me. Because I, I, was, I wasn't going doing the deep diving myself. And he looked at me and he said, are you happy? And I said, yeah. He goes, well, then you're living it. <laughs> and that was it. It was like, if you're, you know, and, and we were, that's how we're supposed to be on the earth plane, we're supposed to be happy and, and having fun. Like this isn't supposed to be a heavy trip. And um, that's, that's the way we're wired is to be social, happy, interact with everyone, love everyone, um, be community minded and um, to help others, right? Uplift everyone. So Mary, you're a real inspiration. You're living the dream, honey. <laughs> 
Oh, and, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Yeah. And I'll let I'll let um, the next person speak. Fantastic. Riel. Yeah, a wonderful group, everybody. Hi, thank you. Um, uh, for myself, you know, the kingdom within um, is really empowering through your own soul journey. And I know when this whole COVID thing kind of led off back in March of 2020, for the first two weeks, I was like, oh, my God, you know, we're all going to die. And then it hit me like a lightning bolt that this was all not anywhere near what they were saying it was. Mm -hmm. And within a very short period of time, I went from, you know, like, oh my God, to quite angry. Like, how come I see it? No one else sees it. Like, wake up. Mm -hmm. Like, wake the F up. <laughs> yeah. And I went on with that for some time and I found it very challenging. And then fortunately, uh, some dear friends um, were along the same path. And I've, I've clung to those people in some ways because I found it this, you know, too disruptive to be around people that see it completely different. And I had a lot of judgment that I had to face and still do from time to time, but it's improved dramatically when I focused more on what I could do myself for myself. Mm -hmm. right? And there's a book out, speaking of books, it's by, I don't know, has anybody read uh, Elizabeth Hesch, uh, The Initiation? Mm -hmm. I think most people in this circle would likely uh, enjoy it. Uh, it was recommended to me some years ago and if you look it up, I think it's on Amazon. If you look it up, a lot of people comment, you know, remember, once you read something, you can't unread. <laughs> and that's the experience I had. And a lot of people I know that have read it say it's like Elizabeth is in the room with you, who's now deceased. And um, it's the story of, of her present life when she was alive, where she went through uh, the early days of World War II. And during this, um, you know, traumatic event, I think she was holed up in the basement of her home that was being bombed for like a month or something. She went through uh, a lot of past lives where she'd been a high priestess in Egypt. And then these two lives kind of melted together and she became, you know, in no uncertain ways, became aware that, you know, she was an incarnated being and had been incarnated many times. And that this traumatic event that she was going through was giving her insights that she wouldn't have had. And I know for myself, uh, you know, I've had some instances in my life that were pretty traumatic. They were almost immediately followed by some awakening, <laughs> a place that I hadn't been to before that likely wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have been in that space. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came to that realization with this, where it's just not one or two of us that are being disrupted, or you know, 100 or 10,000 people, it's hundreds of millions, if not billions of people, all being affected by the same time. Mm -hmm. How can that not lead to something positive, <laughs> mm -hmm. based in my experience, right? So, uh, Elizabeth often talked about, and I found this a little challenging to understand at first, but I'm, in the last six months or so, it's, it's become very um, empowering for me, is that you don't so much want to live in the present, you want to live in eternity, because your soul is eternal. And that really vibrated for me, where when I think of eternity, I, I, I connect with the true essence of who I am. And that gives me strength beyond, you know, anything you own or know or for myself. It, it really helps me all the time. Thank you for sharing that. So that that really, you know, 
and, and since then I've really come to understand all the benefits that you know this time right now is bringing us, and um, it it makes a it makes a much more you know like you were just saying Denise you know it brings a lot more happiness to every day. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. I love so it. So if you're looking for a, a book to read, I highly, highly recommend Initiation by uh, Elizabeth Ash. She was a, a yoga, a yogi. Um, and she only passed away about 20 years, ago, I think in the 80s. So what's that, 40 years ago now already? Or maybe the 90s. And uh, it's just her life story, present, past. And there's a lot of, I don't know if anybody here is into alchemy, enormous and all those things. But she talks a lot about that. She talks about the unk symbol and resurrection. And so, you know, the people I was um, working with at the time, that's, you know, we were all into. And there's a lot of hidden meanings in that book. You probably read it half a dozen times. Still not have understood everything or learned everything. Well, you happen to be with a few alchemists. And uh, so that's why there was a little giggle down there in the audience or in the gallery there. Um, Michael, if you want to speak into alchemy, um, it was because of you that I read uh, Studies of Alchemy by St. Germain, uh, both the second and third pillar, uh, because Michael said those two and then the human aura by Katumi and advanced studies of the human aura are essentially like the four pillars of the teachings of the ascended masters. So Michael, if you want to just touch on the topic of alchemy in relation to transformation of self image with the remodeling that we have an opportunity to do with the internal real estate that we're working with this year, if I know it's a big question again, I can I can just hear Denise. What oh, a big question! <laughs> oh, if if you look at the cover page of Book One, Alchemy by Saint Germain, it's described as the science of self transformation. And I'm going to tie that into my previous comment about time spent on spiritual work. We are divine beings and most of us because of experience and because of cultural conditioning have lessened the intensity of our connection to our inner divinity. Much like corrosion or rust occurs on an old electric wire, or much like calcification occurs inside old plumbing. And so the connection is not as clean and the flow is not as strong as it could be. And this very much is the effect on our consciousness due to the immersion in the mass consciousness of our daily life from the moment we're born. We come from pure spirit. We come from no limitation. And the ocean reduced into the glass. It's, we, we come in as a newborn baby, and, and now the limits day by day, hour by hour, are imposed upon our consciousness until by the time we're teenagers and in our 20s, we've got less than 1% of what we originally had in terms of the connection to our, our source. And so if we want to regain that connection, we've got to do self-cleansing, spiritual cleansing. We've got to do spiritual work in order to accomplish that. And alchemy has many avenues to accomplish that. We work very much with sound. And alchemy, as it's taught, is very involved with symbols. 
and symbols are highly charged with meaning and the subconscious operates very much with symbols. And I'll tell you a, a very interesting experience that we had at Shambhala Temple a few years ago. We began working with Bija mantras and these are mantras that are in the Sanskrit language and they're very short, they're very simple, but they are profoundly created by highly intelligent beings many, many hundreds of thousands of years ago. And they're described to us as being seed syllables. And what I was telling the class when we began to work with them was that we're planting the seeds of virtue in our consciousness when we chant the Bija mantras. And we did them for 10 minutes once a week for a month. And I thought it was so interesting that I continued to describe them as the seeds of virtue. And after a month of planting the seeds of virtue, a guest was brought to one of our classes and he was a doctor named John Virtue. <laughs> Love it. Planting seeds of virtue. That's exactly what's required. And the crazy thing, insane thing maybe, is the fact that when I called myself in to the police, I was basically telling them I needed to get to their leaders because we needed to create a virtues-based culture, which is the cult you are. That was part of it, but it's the summarized version where when you get one piece of a story, it sounds absolutely insane. But then when you get like all of the pieces, then it makes a little more sense. But sometimes some stories still just have a hint of over the edge that doesn't fully make sense until two years later when we're in the process of just saying, okay, now it's time for us to really do what I was saying needed to happen then, which is create a round table with all of the virtues of the best from all of the mystery schools, traditions, and belief systems that ultimately we can refine down to the virtues. And then we can actually use that common foundation in order to build the new orderly world together that we're here to reclaim with the now. And whether we call it the now present moment or now the eternal moment, it is time for us to realize the power we have now to actually live a virtues-based existence. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, time. I love it. Well, if anybody tries to touch me in any way to arrest me or detain me or take away my freedoms, Again, and I say this because anyone that is showing up to any kind of meetings, the OPCA litigant, organized pseudo-legal commercial argument litigant title is a status you do not want to consent to. When the con is sent, do not accept. I do not consent. I do not understand. I do not stand under your jurisdiction. You who is a de facto government when we actually claim the right to stand as men and women. And when we stand as men and women, we have power when we're in our private capacity and it's common law, which is when man and man, man and woman, woman on woman, we look one another in the eye as the eye that we see and the eye on the page, which is why when you sign on behalf of a corpse, that is when then you also assume liabilities, duties, obligations, and responsibilities that come with that role within the corpse that you're signing on behalf of and giving it your lifeblood which means you're the one that pays if it has to be bled. And so now it's time instead for us to say, okay, that was the way it was and it paid to play that game, but the cost is too high if you gain the world, but you lose your soul in the process. So let's create a new program and let's do it in common unity with others who are willing to put their best forward without making profits before people be the way that we actually do this because that doesn't work where we're going either because it is energetically based and you can feel mistruth. And that is why if something is 100%, which what is, if something's 99%, I meant to say, then you, if you don't know where the 1% mistruth is, then how do you know what's good? It's like if a fly's in the soup, is the whole soup bad? Like, what do you do? 
she just pick out this fly and you know the fly is not in there but you know the fly was in there or like what do we do so we got flies we got soup what do you guys think men and women i should say no guys here no title no title. Yeah, thank you. I got on my little terrain about common law and taking a stand and the fact that if anybody comes after you and tries to lay a status on you, you tell them, no, man, I am standing. And so are you because you're the one that I'm looking in the eye that's coming after me, causing me direct harm, loss, fraud, or not keeping the peace. Therefore, it is you that will pay even if it is your paycheck that is making you fulfill that order. Think twice. That's what we must start doing in a nice way. We can still do it that way, but they need to be told. We all need like plausible deniability or what is called the colors of right in law. That is where they can say, but it seemed right. So that was what I was doing 55, 55 in the video. I don't think so. Now we come together back last year i was trying to create a, what i was calling a bridge in a document that men and women could use to put their notice their employers on notice because basically here's what i've come to understand in addition to what i've shared about statuses and standing which as much as it's about the outside world it's also a transformation of the internal world to get to the place of being able to know these things is that the status and standing is different because statuses are based on what legal fictions do and then standing is what men and women do. That's huge. We stand in our private capacity, but once we're in the public jurisdiction, that's when we're under someone else's jurisdiction, which means their law, what they say, and we stand under it until we say, no, I'm gonna stay pure and I'm gonna stay in and of myself. And I'm going to claim the right to be lawfully self-governing. And you do the same and you do the same and every single one that is in here does the same. We all claim the right to be able to stand on the unwritten law, which is common law, not English common law, not King's common law, not natural law, common law in its pure, unwritten, unadulterated sense. Unwritten means unboxed. And when we actually take common law out of the box and we stop letting someone else apply a jurisdiction, which means it's not gonna be in our favor because then it's written and then it's boxed in. If we take our power back and we stand as men and women and we claim the right to stand on something, meaning the claim is what we're standing on, that is when we have something to stand on in the court of land, air and water which is why it's multiple jurisdictions under one, which is why common law on its own doesn't work, but staying in your private compared to the public does. And when I tried to make that bridge to take away plausible deniability before actually sending the notice to put the man or woman that's acting as a bully on notice in their private capacity that an overreach had been stated or an overreach had occurred, it didn't work because nobody used it. So we have to get behind a common initiative. And so I really appreciate you for coming tonight. I appreciate you for taking a chance and investing nearly an hour of your night at the beginning of a new year into something that you have no idea how to quantify what it means to you, what it means for you, or what it's going to do in the scheme of things unless you actually reflect on it. So I would love to know after this, what this message meant to you, what it meant for you, what you're gonna do with it. I'd love for you to connect with some of the ones that are in the screen that you resonate with. Denise, if you wanna actually share white light, um, white light healer, if you could share when you do your uh, twice weekly meetings, if you're still doing those in the new year, I'm sure there's people that would benefit from hearing. Sure. Um... So I do a um, online shamanic uh, drum healing circle, but I also talk about how to cope in today's times. Uh, I channel messages uh, from spirit through my higher self. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes ascended masters come in or the higher angelic realms, but it, it's also a drum healing journey. So it's, you know, it's a guided meditation to the drum and it opens the portals and all this beautiful healing energy comes in. We release blocks. Um, so I do this on Tuesday nights at 7.30. And uh, you can, pardon? 
Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can find me on Meetup at uh, White Light, or sorry, Sacred Healing Drum on Meetup. I'm on Telegram, uh, White Light Healer. And um, I'm on Facebook, White Light Healer Group. And you'll get the, the Zoom link. Or you can email me at whitelightconnect at gmail.com. I know that's a lot of white light, <laughs> a lot of information, but if you're looking for me, you'll find me. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. And uh, I welcome anybody who this resonates with uh, to come join us on Tuesday night. And Thursday night, you do another. Um, I was, I was. Um, I'm going to have a radio show and I, I'm doing different things. So, um i'm right now it's tuesday nights for sure the odd time i come on thursdays which is a white light connect prayer um where we send energy out to the world but now we're doing that on tuesdays we're healing and then we're sending energy out so prayer prayer to me is you're sending energy you're healing energy out and meditation is bringing in right you're you're bringing activations healing um Res just uh, realizations, everything, right? So um, yeah, I'm combining it all on the Tuesday night for now, but yeah, that's that's it in a long-winded way to, to describe it. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. And Tuesday is enough. Uh, so definitely I tune in to those meetings occasionally. So you'll see yours truly. Well, actually you won't see me because it's Denise in the video, but that's the point because it's the meditation, it's the card pull. So that's, it's and not- also, And if people can't make it on Tuesday nights, there's replays. You yeah. can always catch the replay. I'm on Rumble, White Light Healer, or anyways, look around, you'll find me. <laughs> I don't want to take up everybody's time here. We'll, we'll link it up so you can find Denise. She's got a Telegram group as well, so you can join that. I will say that on Thursday nights, actually, oftentimes at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, Susan Mann, who has been a mentor of mine and energy worker I plug into uh, from here in Ontario as well, she actually has been offering different groups throughout last year and she has her uh thursday night groups at 7 30 so uh, denise isn't hosting anything on thursday nights but susan mann is that is something that i plug into as well as a participant oftentimes and oftentimes pass out because of the energy work that is happening as it happens and i trust her to keep a safe container just the way that i do with denise as well so I will share Susan's information for you to be able to check her out. And she, in 2012, shared a phenomenal story about the train station and how it's like you have to go through these different checkpoints in order to get to the platform. And at each of the checkpoints, you have to release different baggage. And so you go through and you go through. And I'll share the actual story as she did it so i don't bastardize it and paraphrase it right now um, but the point is is that you get into the train and we're on the train right now and we're moving forward and so i wanted to introduce susan to you too at the beginning of this 2022 year and then also say that uh, michael seekers has the shambhala temple of light as well in the gta and online so you can go check that out um, that is a great resource and Michael leads the beginners class at seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time uh, with 30 minutes ish of decrees and then a 30 ish minute dictation. What I'd like to say is that um, we found in the past year that that's not the most effective way to introduce new people. Uh, we want to bring them through the intro program first, and we've now got a new website. It's higherconsciousness.ca. Okay, yes. Loaded with tools and resources, and we're going to be starting Zoom orientation classes on Saturday afternoons, 2, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, probably in the next two, three weeks, we'll get that going. And that'll lead people into our intro program where they can go through the, the video modules and get them ready for the, the broadcast. I think the broadcast is premature to be promoting at this point. 
Okay, well, that's a change with the year. So that's super cool. And the intro series is the one that uh, it's based off of the videos that we put together last year. That's right. We want to get people to that, but we need to be able to steer them toward that. Yeah. And uh, the higherconsciousness.ca website is our tool for the new outreach. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and so on higherconsciousness.ca, you'll actually hear yours truly reading uh, the first two books so far, uh, and you can actually read the books on your own, or you can listen to me as you read them, or you can listen to the replays of all of those that I've done on Facebook, and Francoise Lepchek has been co-hosting those meetings with me, and so we've just got the Human Aura Advanced Studies or uh, advanced studies or intermediate studies, the next one of the human aura. Um, so uh, we've got that we'll be doing in this new year, um, but definitely that is accessible through higherconsciousness.ca. So uh, Michael and I were involved with that project this year where we met some incredible people too. So I feel like 2021 was literally one of my best years ever, ironically enough. And it was also on the 15th of January, I was forced into unpaid leave of absence because I wouldn't wear a mask so it's nearly a year of when my life got shifted out of a comfort zone where I got to be a community connector on the front lines to you know also break people out of their trance and make jokes about being part of the retraining brigade and you know and warn people about all of the agendas to pay attention to and what's going on and all the fear in which I sold things like there was one time I'll say that you know, I was checking a man through and he had these fresh, beautiful vegetables. And I made a comment about like, everything's poisoned. And it's just like, I was in such scarcity and just like, I'd probably watch something about all of the poisons and the chemicals and everything they put into all the food. And it was like, I had abundance in front of me. And I was saying like, there's nothing to eat that's not contaminated. And he's like, okay, lady, like, you know. <laughs> So, you know, you got to experience the insanity of the truth. And so we congratulations to all of us for being willing to continue to be ourselves authentically in a world that literally has to have an archetype for what it means to be you. You know, like to tell your truth, to tell the truth as, a, as an archetype. Like, what does that mean? That the rest of the world doesn't actually tell the truth because like only the select minority do that can then get pigeonholed into an us versus them group so that it's no longer the individuals in the screen and their name, but instead it's actually about the group instead. And then that makes it so that it's easier to take away the members of the group because then they're just members instead of the individuals that are members of the group. So just bringing truth to light is a very dangerous proposition, but it's never been safe to be empowered throughout our entire story. The shared story of our souls, our lineage, it's never been safe truly to be empowered. But what if we actually change that? Like what if we had the power to change the story? So it wasn't his story anymore, it was ours. And what if the whole journey to remembering to remembrance to remembering is to realize that we have the secret we have the key and it's about moving out of the secret into the sacred and to stop saying oh but i'm in the know and you're out of the know which means i can't let you in the know until then you know and then we know and then they have to not know in order for us to be able to be in the know for them to not know well let's just get rid of the secret and get back to the sacred is my idea, which is part of the sacred sojourn in the soul or the sacred sojourn of the soul, which I hope offers an idea about the transformation awaiting each of us this year. That's already awaited each of us and we've all been through in our own way. And so I believe it's time to bring the sacred back. And I am so grateful to have got to share this night with each of you who are here. So. I want to honor everyone for showing up and uh, I would love to know if anyone has any final comments before we end this first extraordinary meeting of 2022. I think um, 
as you were talking, I'll just be very brief. Um, as you were talking about truth, truth, what is the truth, everybody? You know, I think truth is a vibration. It's a very pure vibration and it's a higher frequency. So if everybody goes within for their truth, everybody's going to resonate and, you know, um, vibrate, right? At the same. But everybody has to realize what their truth is. And it's not telling someone else that, you know, you don't connect with me, I'm right, you're wrong, that kind of thing. No, it's just going in with the ultimate wisdom that we came into this world with and tapping into that and just vibrating at our truth, right? Because truth is pure. So that's, that's all I like to say. Love it. Inner sense, innocence, the mm. innocence of our inner sense and getting back to that aspect of our own inner child and the child within being the soul. And so that soul God spark within us that actually becomes what then we're sensing and feeling the resonance of truth with. Mm -hmm. All right, final words. Others? Who would like to take the <clears throat> stage? Mars! Maybe, maybe I should introduce myself because uh, I have been quiet just taking in to see what's going on here. <laughs> and that is who I am. I feel you can see seeker Mars. I'm seeking to see what's going on. Who says what and what are the what are the values I can take take from the discussion and conversation. Anyway, uh, again, I'm, uh, I'm Mars and I really enjoyed the talk here. And the, I see quite a lot of the spirituality and the stuff that is not really my forte. I believe Mother Nature created us quite different one from the other, but we can coexist and really enjoy the life with each other. My forte is more kind of this, the best way I can describe it is mechanical, kind of two plus two, four. And to the fact, to the effect that quite often when I hear manifest the spirituality or calling all that, I'm at total loss. I really don't understand. I'm getting there slowly, slowly, very slow. I don't know if I ever get there because you know, because of my age and I'm almost 80 now. I don't know how many years I'm, I'm, I still have ahead of me, but it doesn't really matter. As I said, I'm more mechanical and I can, I have done this and they, when they were talking about, for example, common law or any other law, I have done quite a lot of work on fields like common law or legal arena. And uh, these days, I'm really more than anything else focusing on trying to provide what people need to, to get their life back, whatever they mean by getting their life back. If they need some sort of uh, legal assistance or, or, or uh, even healing and stuff like that. When I mean, well, what I mean by healing is actual healing from the disease or problem. For example, these days, one of the main things that is happening around us is to talk of the uh, coronavirus and what happens, all those kind of stuff. I personally have absolutely no concern about any of those diseases. And the simple fact is because I know, I learned about effect of some of the easily available technologies that you can really, the best way I can put it is the best investment anyone could have in relation to their health, which is the uh, learning how to use ozone. Ozone is not just the ozone that you are referred, you are, uh, you are told about in the atmosphere, Ozone is O3 and it destroys all known viruses, bacteria, mold, and fungus. And I can share those with you guys if there, if there is any interest. 
As I said, they're more of a mechanical guy, kind of hands-on with the, with, the, with the growing stuff. I can easily make things go faster and yield more and have better nutrients and all natural, that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to find the niche somewhere to make that happen because I truly believe in order for us to be able to better enjoy the life and help others, if that's what we decide to do, to enjoy their life, is to make things available to them. Mm -hmm. And in a format of the, what, is, what is known as the open source, rather than charging for the knowledge, you only charge for your time, but the knowledge for free, so. I thought to raise that issue and see what the reaction is in this group and other groups and then decide what to do with it. Mm. So that's, that's where my mind is. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you came, Moz, and that you shared. Uh, Moz is actually also, um, in, he mentioned about the legal arena and he's helping a lot of people with all of that. So definitely a good connection and your is it take action canada that you do that on behalf of Moz? yeah i'm a i'm one of the founder of take action canada take yeah. action canada.ca yeah take action canada.ca so uh Moz is the founder of that which is how we got connected so definitely a great resource to be able to plug into and um, so thank you for introducing yourself. Mike and Lori, you haven't had an opportunity to do so. I see that you're muted and I can't see you to know what's going on in your box there. So if you would like to share, Lori, please take it away. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really have anything to add, but thank you for everything. Happy New Year to everyone. Beautiful. Thank you, Lori. That was enough. Appreciate you very much for showing up and for putting that into the space as well. That was awesome. Mike, if you would like to make, ooh, there we go. Hey. Oh, um, thank you guys for your wonderful speech. Um, speeches. Um, part of me, I'm a bit uh, ate too much over the Christmas. Anyways, um, I, I really enjoy the spiritual energy and the affirmations from deep within the soul and that's it really is what i've been longing for many years of my life i mean it's uh and to find like-minded individuals and perhaps in front of me are those uh, at a higher higher point at their journey um how do you say but uh, yes they, especially with covid it's the camaraderie i i need right now and um i, I really look forward to next meeting so um, thank you very much for your time. I'd like to share more down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That was absolutely beautiful. And my heart is so over just flowing right now in gratitude for your showing up, for your sharing, for your finding the community of others that are also seeking you because that's what our desires do. So awesome to have you here and to know that we have been created because of the need that each of us have had. Denise, did I see something in your screen that said you wanted to say anything? No. No? Okay, well, I just go where things attract me. Riel, I just wanted to see if you wanted to share any final pieces. Um, I echo what Mike said it was a wonderful session. Um, I think it's, well, I know for myself and probably everybody here is like preaching to the choir, but to, to hang out with like-minded people right now, and to, to step forward and look forward beyond all the, you know, <laughs> the, what's happening and just to start consciously creating what we're looking for. And I think a group like this is exactly what, uh, where you start, right? Love it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mary? Yeah, I just want to share that. Um, uh, is that Denise from White Light Healer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I got about truth uh, is like, you know, like we all, you know, stand in a certain truth mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's our integrity and it's what works. It's like our work, 
And so for me, I will not, you know, like what this has taught me through all of COVID is that I will not stand any, any other place, but that place. And, you know, we don't realize even the little things we go outside and we do and we be, and we don't realize the impact it caused, like, you know, that it, it's a ripple effect in other people's lives. You know what I mean? And it's just like one person and you don't realize how many people you affect when you walk out that door and you smile at somebody because you have no mask, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, transformation isn't always pretty. And sometimes people react around me very, very harshly. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that. And, and now I bring fun and play with it. And, you know, it, and that's what you were bringing that, um, uh, Laura, you're bringing fun and play now. And that's a good sign when you're, you're at the fun and play part, because in the beginning, it's like anger. And then, you know, you go through that kind of thing, you know, so I thank you all for be for, you know, um, there is a group on Wednesdays also, like there's a group on Wednesdays if anybody wants to join and just come on because they're experiencers in Toronto. And so like th- she has different beautiful guests on there too. And if, yeah. and if you do want to just, um, you know, I'll, I can, uh, anyways, Laura will, I'll send it to Laura and she can put it on anyways, but Thank anybody's you. welcome to come on. So. But thank you very much for this beautiful time I had with you guys. Amazing. Wow. (laughs) Please do share it into the comments there, Mary. And I'll make sure to uh, get that out to everyone. And we will definitely come back again and host another of these roundtable meetings. So I value and appreciate each of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you sincerely for showing up. And I also sincerely thank you for being brave enough to share your perspective because your voice does matter, your presence matters, and you are an eternal member of the now. I'm trying to figure out how to work that one in there, Riel, but I'm so used to doing it the way that I've done it that doing something different in this moment is jamming. So it's not the way just yet, but we don't have to get it perfect either. And that's just another reminder that life happens right where we are. And I'm grateful to be, have been here with you this evening. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, happy new year. Thank you. Thank you. Right?